protesters out here today, but we don't have as many. We had over, um, over 100 people say that they were interested today, that they were coming. We had 600 people on the website say that they were interested. But when you can't buy gas, you can't fix your car, when you don't have income from your unemployment checks, you can't take care of your families. And that's the problem today. Now we can silence them the governor has been silent, the attorney general has been silent, the secretary of labor has been silent, and this is a crime against humanity. So instead of calling it claims, call us people. You purge people out of the system. The second crime against humanity is the fact that the unemployed now are uninsured. Because of the injustice of our health care system, we tie it insurance to our employer. So when you lose your job, you now have lost your insurance. The Maryland leadership response to that was to open up the Maryland Insurance Exchange, which closed yesterday. Now what are the people supposed to do? If you don't have an unemployment check and you can't pay your rent and mortgage, and you can't feed your kids, you are not gonna pay for insurance. We are asking the Maryland General Assembly to immediately not only open up a special session, but to expand Medicaid in the middle of a pandemic and give people access to the health care that they need in the middle of a pandemic. So we have a lot of demands. We're going to walk through each of those demands. But before I do that, I want to acknowledge that we have some local leaders here and representation who are standing in solidarity with us. And we are very grateful for their leadership and their service to us as their constituents. We have Delegate Heather Bagnall, she's gonna say a few words from Anne Arundel County. We have Delegate Mike Rogers from Anne Arundel County, and we have representatives from other um, offices, and we're, uh, we're, we're sorry that um, Congressman Jamie Raskin couldn't be here today, but we do have um, a letter of support from him. But the other congressmen, where are they today? We invited all of our leadership to stand in solidarity with us today. And 
we're going to pass the microphone to Heather, then we're going to read our demands, then we're going to come back and talk about our calls to action. Yes, and we would like to do a shout out to the um, staffer from Shelly. Hellman's office today is coming out here to stand in, with, um, in solidarity with us. We appreciate everybody wearing their masks. We appreciate when you grab the microphone to please use hand sanitizer before you grab the microphone and after so that we are mindful of what's going on in a global pandemic. Many people like myself have been protesting for weeks with Black Lives Matter. And it's important that the white people end their silence. And we will continue to protest the injustices of all of these policies, including not paying unemployment insurance checks to the people of Maryland. We have 3 million qualified workers here in the state of Maryland. Over 728,000 of them have filed claims. Everything's fine. It's been fixed. 
got to fix this. This is urgent. This is this is a crisis, and we're not addressing it as though it's a crisis. We're addressing it as though people have the time to wait, and they don't. Thank you, Delegate Hatton-Bagnall. We appreciate you coming out today and standing in solidarity. We're now going to spend a minute and talk about our petition. We have over 1,800 signatures on our petition that we've delivered now three times to Governor Logan. And we're going to read each one out loud. of the 
mail saying, oh, by the way, you owe us money back. And we're like, and I'm like, honey, uh, let's not do anything with that card. Let's call and try to figure out what's going on. So we called. Of course, we didn't get through. And after I got hung up on, I said, hey, go ahead and see what's in there and take the money. And we'll deal with it at the end. So, um, but that's all they've done. They haven't gotten any anything else since then. And, but then the other, like last week, we get a few other pieces of mail saying, oh, no, you don't owe money now. So I don't understand what's going on. Um, so that's just what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to say, you know, like, this is, this is what we're dealing with. And, you know, all this, I, I try to say that, I mean, they emailed, they have called, they emailed, still no response. And then we have our petition. So whoever's out there, um, Please, um, I'm sorry. So, you know, people out there watching, please, if you sign our petition, call your legislative um, representatives. Uh, they're trying to do what they can. Um, another thing with the whole closing stuff is that I did reach out to, Ma, to uh, Senator Van Hollen's office, and I was told that their um, staff can't come out because of the whole social distancing. So like how convenient, right? So they don't come out, they can stay safely in their house, get paid, and um, you know, but the rest of us have to have to come out, get back to work, or have to do this, have to do this. I mean, you know, do I want to stand out here and then possibly give the virus to my 84 year old dad? No, I don't want to do that, but I have to be out here. So anyway, that's all I have to say, thanks for coming, everybody, and um, thank you, Yasmin. So again, in standing in solidarity, we have another one of our state delegates here, Delegate Bill Castro, is going to say a few words. Then we're going to recite our demands from the petition and do a statement from Congressman. Oh, thank you. Because it's so ridiculous Hello, that. Everyone. My name is Lisa Bell Castro. I'm a delegate really representing ridiculous. District 11. For Aye. months now, we've been tracking all the constituents who need help okay. with unemployment and their claims. Yeah. Okay. That list continues to grow, but it is not shrinking. Um, Thank you. We, the calls now, here we are now, months into a pandemic. The calls aren't about claims anymore. The calls are about being able to feed their families, being able to pay their rent. Um, there has never been more of a time that we need government to step up and serve its constituents than right now. And unfortunately, unfortunately, we failed miserably at that when it comes to the Department of Labor. We're going to keep working on this. We're not going to rest until all the claims in our office are solved. Thank you for coming out and speaking, um, speaking about this very important issue. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's not right. We need to address these issues. We need to get more people on these cases. We need to make sure that we are getting the people the, mo the money that they desperately need and desperately deserve. As an elected official, the answers that we get are very limited. It's outrageous. It's disgraceful. My thing of it is they're talking about the phone number, then we dial the phone number. I mean, you can't even, they talking about the system not set up yet. You go, yeah, they, they, well, they, they, they give you a phone number to call, and then you can't even, they say that, 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 it's ridiculous. The, I tried yesterday, it hangs up on you. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. I mean, I'm employed, but I'm just speaking on behalf of the, my friend. I got a couple friends that's, you know, just trying and trying. It's been several weeks, you know, to try to get their benefits. And one young lady, um, she hasn't been living at one place for like two years. And they say, well, we're going to send your card out seven to ten business days at a um, address you hadn't lived at in two years. What are these people doing? So, it's a dead end. Yeah. So, and then they don't drive. I would go up by the time I go over to the house and bring them back. Y'all might be gone, you know. So I just came down to lend my support, you know. Yeah.
Now, what is the delegate? What is she saying? Now? everyone who's gathered here today to try to help the tens of thousands of Marylanders who have still not received the unemployment assistance they need and are owed during the COVID-19 crisis. Thank you all for your, determined for your determined advocacy and your fierce commitment to support our fellow Marylanders. Although I could not be with you in, in person today, yeah, please know I that I right. am with you completely in spirit and am fighting hard to make sure the governor gets unemployment insurance benefits to the people. More than 500,000 people in our state have filed for unemployment assistance since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. That's roughly one in six Marylanders who are counting on unemployment assistance to buy food, medicine, and diapers, or to help keep a roof over their heads. One in six Marylanders are counting on this money to survive. Our state's unemployment system is failing many of them. Roughly 70,000 Maryland have been waiting for weeks to receive the financial assistance they desperately need and are entitled to by law. This is plainly unacceptable. More must be done and quickly to help unemployed Marylanders survive this pandemic and absorb the financial shock of these events. I won't stop fighting until this is fixed, and I know you won't either. Again, Jamie Raskin from District 8, uh, U.S. Representatives. And with that, I also want to take a moment to reiterate what we protesters are out there demanding, because as we've heard from our elected officials, the government needs to take action now. What we are asking for is immediate release of funds to anyone who has filed for unemployment. Anyone who has been waiting longer than four weeks is suffering. Yes. Yes. The majority of working here, 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 here. do not have a safety net to get by during unexpected loss of income. Money needs to get into the hands of the people now. They need to do whatever it takes to see to it that that happens. They need to wait all procedures and unreasonable delays to payment. Enough blaming the faulty system, which they chose to roll out in the middle of a pandemic. Enough crazy policies and disqualifying reasons for withholding payments and not communicating that to people who have filed. They need to increase transparency to claimants on the status, including detailed descriptions of why they're not getting paid, when they can expect it to be resolved, and how they can appeal a decision that they are undeserving of unemployment insurance. They need to implement or upgrade some telephone system that works. It is the bare minimum right for us to speak to a human being during this time. This is an emergency and a global crisis, and we can't even get through to a human being on the phone. Shame. Shame. They need to hire additional telephone agents and expand the scope of what those agents are able to do. How many of you have finally, after hours and thousands of calls, got through to an agent who couldn't tell you anything about your phone? If you finally get through. If you get through. Right. After eight weeks, I got through on the Spanish 
slide. Okay. I, I translated all of the operator commands so that I could press two for Spanish. And then I got through to someone who could explain to me that why was I wasn't right. getting paid. And by the way, I was told I would be waiting at least another seven weeks. It's unacceptable. We're also demanding that they honor all payments. We're seeing people who finally get something, they finally get a card in the mail, they get some funds, but not all. They're getting a portion, maybe their state of Maryland funds, but not their CARES Act funds. We need the state of Maryland to ensure that all unemployed Marylanders are getting all of the funds they deserve during the entirety of the time that they've been employed, unemployed because of this crisis. We need to see that the CARES Act is expanded to at least December 2020 because as we can all see, this crisis has not gone away yet. Hundreds of thousands remain unemployed and the financial suffering is not going to go away as soon as we get our jobs back. I've talked to people who couldn't attend this event because they've already lost their cars. I've talked to people who are wondering, now that they've gotten paid, how are they going to get out of the credit card debt that they've accrued while waiting for income and waiting for unemployment checks that never came? People are not going to recover from this overnight, and we need help, and we need to hold our government accountable. We need expanded CARES Act payments, expanded Medicaid, and we have got to continue holding our government accountable to getting us the money we need. That is our top priority. Pay us what we need. With that, I'm going to pass it back. And uh, I know there, there are a few people I've talked to who want to share their stories about uh, the you know, unemployment system and what's uh, gone wrong in their cases. So would anyone like to join? the Attorney General. We have heard that all of this is sitting on his desk, but it is not a priority. Why isn't it a priority for the Attorney General to hold our governor accountable? Yeah. Somebody is responsible. We need our Attorney General to step up, and we need the state leaders to put pressure on him. Everyone, hello somebody. So, we want to expand Medicaid. Expand Medicaid. Give people in a global pandemic we don't have the money to continue to support Blue Cross Blue Shield profits in the middle of a global pandemic. We need a special session. We want a special session to come back to the Maryland delegation to override all of the vetoes. And you can go to our Revolution Maryland Facebook page and sign that petition so that we can have a special election to override those vetoes. Then you need to call your congressmen. We have 10 men that represent us here in the state of Maryland, and it's time to elect a woman, so I'm going to put that plug out there. And we need to have them expand the CARES Act through December 31st. Like Anna said, this economy's not going to bounce right back. We're not going to have the same volume of jobs that we had before the pandemic started. We need an expansion to that, and we need all of the congressmen to sign on to Medicare for All. It's an absolute crime against humanity. 
that in America, and it's a global embarrassment, that we don't have access to health care. It's a human right, and everybody deserves that. All right, and at a minimum, give us Medicaid during the global pandemic here in the state of Maryland. Now, we, those are the call to action. We are going to open up this mic again. We are in a pandemic. Keep your masks on. Please use hand sanitizer before and after you use the microphone. Thank you, media, for being here to capture these stories. certifications didn't have a law degree and they were super nice people they're on the right side of right they're trying to help us but the fact that they turned down the opportunity for our state delegates and, and senators to help in this process um, again is part of the injustice of what's going on in the system today okay who else would like to grab the mic perfect here we go i'm gonna sanitize Hi, 
everybody. Uh, my name is Shannon Darrow. Um, like so many of us here in Maryland, um, I'm unemployed right now, receiving benefits. Um, everything that everyone has said about how difficult it's been to use the Beacon Portal to get a good response and to get benefits is absolutely true. It took me eight weeks to start getting the benefits, and I know a lot of people, including who have families with children and who are low-wage workers are still waiting. Um, we appreciate the efforts that have been made to ramp up capacity, but it's still a really urgent issue, time. and it needs more and urgency from our okay. Thank you. Thank you. So again, in solidarity, we have Delegate Sheila Ruth. She's going to come take the microphone and say words. Thank you, Delegate Ruth. Thank you, everybody, and thank you all for coming out. Um, th this situation is just simply unacceptable. Every day, we delegates get emails from people who have been trying for eight, nine, 10, 12 weeks to get their unemployment. They just want to get, you know, what's, what's due to them. They pay taxes their entire life. They've never needed help, but this is an unprecedented crisis. And it's just, it's unacceptable that people are going through this, having to call at all day, getting busy signals and system errors, and then to hear the governor say everything is great. And just this week, I had an email from a constituent with a screenshot of an error from the system, and the error was an internal server error. And I am a web developer, so I know an internal server error is something that the user should never see, and it means a problem with the system. So everything is not great. Now I will say they are starting to work through the cases, and I, I think that in large part that's because of the noise that you all are making. This week we got um, e an email from sure. them with a commitment to working through these cases and to better communicating with us. So please keep the pressure on, keep working, and we will keep the pressure on from our side to, to make sure that everything gets resolved. One thing that I want to say is that this is not on the staff of the Department of Labor. The Department of Labor, most of them are working very, very hard in high stress conditions, and we appreciate the work that they're doing. I can't even imagine how difficult that work must be. This is all leadership, and this is a this is a crisis that that needs to be fixed. So, you know, please reach out if you haven't already. Reach out to your delegates and your senator, and we'll be able to advocate on your behalf. Keep making noise, keep putting the pressure on, and you know, together we'll get through this. Thank you. I have not. No, we have a, a liaison. We have a liaison in the labor department that we can. Well, we, we weren't getting much in the way of updates until this week when they um, they have now committed to sending us daily updates and they're sending us a daily update on which cases they've addressed and which cases they've resolved. Um, and, you know, communicating better about what they're doing. But it, up until this week, the communication has not been great. We submit spreadsheets to them of cases and we haven't had even updates really on you know, what's going on with those cases. Oh boy. <laughs> I think one issue is, well, I think there's a couple issues. One is staffing, that, that there's not enough staff. And I'll, I'll tell you honestly, some of us delegates actually volunteered to help. We said, let us come in, let us answer the phones and deal with these cases and train us. And they said, it would be too hard to train us. But, you know, the, I think there needs to be more staff. I think, you know, the, the problem, another problem is that the system is run by a contractor and apparently there's a lack of ability for the Department of Labor staff to access that data. There's, there's some kind of gap between between the Department of Labor and the contractor and you know, that there's a problem there that needs to be addressed. So. I don't know the answer to that, but that is a good, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
sure. Yeah, and that's that's a good question. We're not getting updates on the cases that that we have just this week. But if you're not, I don't know how what's happening with your cases. So I do encourage everybody to contact your delegates and your senators. If you don't know who they are, go to mdelect.net, MD for Maryland, elect.net, and you just put in your address and it'll come up with a list of them and you can contact them. But, you know, it's not just the state delegates. I know the, the federal um, the federal delegation is also hearing these same issues. The county, the county council members are hearing the same issues. So we're all hearing these same issues and it, it needs to be addressed. So I, I have heard it, I've heard anecdotally about a couple of delegates who have had people who were near suicide and they had to, to refer them. That's anecdotal. I don't know of large numbers, but I have heard of a couple. So, so people are desperate. They, they, they need food. They need to pay their rent. And, you know, there's an eviction moratorium, but what happens when the moratorium runs out? So... They are. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you, Delegate Ruth, for coming out and standing in solidarity with us today. Thank you. To all of our delegation that's here today. Perfect. Is there anybody else that would like to grab the mic? Go. Thank you for using hand sanitizer. Thank you for wearing a mask. Thank you for following. I gotta go back to work and answer your calls. <laughs> Thank you, Don. We really appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> I'd first like to say that I'm, I'm not an activist. I don't. I don't do this. Um, I don't protest. I don't picket. And something this week in reading, and we're, a lot of us are part of this Facebook group. There's, 30,000 people in this Facebook group. And everybody's saying the same thing. My story is no different from everybody else. We can't get through, we're not getting paid. It's been seven weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks for some people. But when these people are typing their thoughts and feelings in there, they're, they're crying behind their keyboard. That's what got me out today. I've never needed or wanted a dime from the government. I'm only here because Governor Hogan shut down my business. The least he can do is pay us. Well, he's not allowing us to work. He sits there every day on television, grandstanding about how he's protecting the citizens of this state. He's put us all out of work, and now he won't pay us the unemployment claims that we're deserving. It's it's awful, and he's trying to do, acting like he's a. I'm, I'm running the entire. I'm the chairman of the governors of the United States. Blah blah blah. He wants to run for president one day. Who's going to vote for him when we can't afford to pay our bills, to, to eat? Um, there are people w much worse off than I am, but, you know, in a couple of weeks, I'm not going to have any money. I just want to go back to work, and, and, and I can't. So help us out. Pay us our claims. And, and don't say the system's uh, there's just so many people applying that we can't handle it. I have a ton of friends in the state of Virginia. Not one of them is having any trouble getting their own employment. D.C. Nobody's having a problem in D.C. Pennsylvania. Nobody's having a problem. This is a Maryland problem, Governor. It's your problem. Fix it. Thank you for bringing that up. I mean, my colleagues in Massachusetts, Florida, Jersey, they've all been paid. They're shocked that in Maryland I still haven't been paid yet. And I explained the story on Facebook as well. Okay, are there any other folks that would like to come up? Okay, perfect. Great. Del Delegate Biden is coming back. Perfect, thank you. I just wanted to, to, to personalize this a little bit, um, sort of building on, 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 on what the, the previous gentleman said. By the time people are contacting us in our offices, they've already done everything they can think of. And when they're calling us, a lot of times they're, they're, they're calling for the first time and they're ashamed of it. And I've had 
And I've had to sort of talk to some of the judge and say, no, you're doing what we ask. This is, this is your right. This is the system you have paid into. You're doing what we ask. What we asked was for you to accept benefits, to accept help, accept relief, so that you could stay home. And I am one of those delegates who made a call to the war line out of concern for a constituent who I wasn't sure was going to make it to the next day. So this is not, this is, this is, this, these are not claims. These are people. And these are people who are, are suffering not just from the financial impact, but from the, the psychological and the emotional impact, one, of having to accept relief when, when they don't want to, when, you know, that they're, 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 they're feeling this sense of shame or the guilt because they couldn't. And when we have a system that makes it so hard, it just compounds that. And then when they finally do get through to us and, and, and we still can't help them, you know, it sends the message that you are not a priority. What it sends is the message is the economy is the priority. The, 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 you know, reopening is the priority. But you, the individuals, the constituents, the Marylanders, the voters, are not the priority. And we, we have got to change that. We have got to change that message. Because I, I, I have under, I have heard anecdotally that we have had to bring counselors in for the staff at the Department of Labor because they're hearing these stories too. They're on the receiving end, you know, as delegates, we're on the receiving end of a handful. They're on the receiving end of these stories all day long. All day long. That is the level of cruelty that, that we just, it, it shouldn't be fathomable in Maryland. And we've got to fix it. And it really does, it starts from the top. We have, you know, our governor has the authority to fix this. It's just not the authority. Okay, so as we wrap up, I want to thank um, our leadership for coming out. I want to thank Raskin for sending um, a note in solidarity. We want to thank our state delegates for coming out and helping us today. And yeah, I think. Thank you. Yes. The media.
like, I believe, you know, like, please, we need you. And, um, to check in. you know, you're covering great, all so the so other um, going on, Black Lives Matter, by the way. And, um, so, um, that's all I have to say. But, you know, I'm very passionate about this, so, um, it is not, and OT, it is not working. People are going to stop dying, and then, and then how are you going to answer it? Thank you. Thank you, Gavin. We have one more speaker, one more for the open mic. Sir, I'm going to hand you some hand sanitizer before you grab the microphone, please. And hold it close so we can know. Thank you for coming out today. We certainly appreciate this. Thank you. We can see you have a list of papers here. Hold on. We buried my mother. She died from the coronavirus. She died in the nursing home. She was diagnosed on a Thursday. She was um, considered as positive on a Thursday. She died Sunday night. We didn't get to see her because we couldn't come into the nursing homes. And it really affected our family because we never got to see my mother. Now I'm considered as an essential worker. I go to work every day. I'm not out here trying to collect unemployment. I go out and work every day. And I have sciatica, I got focal tunnel, and I still go out and work every day. And I see no benefit from it. When we go out and work, I feel unsafe. If, if somebody's around me coughing or sneezing, mm. Or uh, within my six foot range, then I feel that threat. And I even called the governor's office to tell them that where I was working at, we didn't have a Spotify, we didn't have running yeah. water, we didn't have hand sanitizer. We used to have to take a urination in the bushes. Yes, I'm telling you, I, I can show it to you on my video And I don't understand why we're being treated like that. I get up every day and go to work and make a living for my family. But I'm getting nothing in return. I don't think it's fair. I, I really would like to take off and mourn my mother. I didn't get I didn't get no days off to mourn my mother. I had to bury my mother, being my brother, and they didn't give us no um, what is it? Uh, they didn't give us no grieving time. The days that I took off to bury my mother, I didn't get paid for it. Mm. And I've been working at this job for over two years. I don't understand, I really don't understand what's going on. I thought the government was supposed to help us, and I'm not wanting to try to get over with the government. That's why I'm out here working. But the government is not trying to help me. Mm. I don't know why. I'm doing everything I can. I'm paying taxes, I'm working, I'm trying to keep the economy going. And for what? Nobody's helping me. Mm. Nobody's helping my family. If I'm out there working and I catch the coronavirus, it's gonna affect my wife, my grandkids, and my family. And nothing's gonna be done about it. Like I said, my mother died. I never thought my mother would die. She's gone. And it, 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 it still hurts. It hurts because if my mother was in hospice and I knew that she was ill and she was, you know, in her deathbed, 
They could be more acceptable. But no, my mom was diagnosed at the nursing home. They took her temperature on a Sunday. They didn't let us know that she was positive to Thursday. Wow. And they never called us. We called them. Wow. Then, after we called them, they told us she was positive. They never took her to the hospital. They never put her on a ventilator. They let her lay there and die within two days. After that, they stole all her belongings. They stole her wallet, everything in her wallet, her money, her um, bank card. She had a gold chain. They stole all her all her belongings. And I'm telling you the truth. And if, I, if I'm lying, I'm going to um, Baltimore County to press charges against the um, the uh, nursing home. It's just not fair. It's, it's like people are using this to take advantage of people. It's not fair. Thank you. Sean Tomlinson. Thank you. against humanity. Where is our empathy? Where is our compassion? You know, this is supposed to be a government for the people, paid for by the people. This is actually our money. They work for us. I'm so sorry, Sean, for your life, for that. And being an essential worker, thank you for your hard work out there. Yeah, thank but you. But the way that we, I'll pay you, I'll pay enough. Right? No time for grieving. Same pay that I got. Yeah, same pay. You know, we need better worker rights. We need to take care of our people. Do you have health care? No, I don't have I don't have no insurance. I don't have no benefits. I don't have uh, vacation. I don't have full one K. I don't have health care. I don't have nothing. The only thing I get is paid holidays. And you don't have access to health care. What about your children? Do your children have health care? No. Where do you work? No. Shoreline painting. Shoreline painting. Shoreline painting. Right? The small businesses, they're trying to survive. Uh, but that's not cool. That's, that's where he works. That's what it is because my, my boss. He, he, he's, a, he's an okay guy, but he was more concerned about me coming to work than me grieving for my mother. Um, it's an I, I can't understand so how I, I somebody could work for me and I wouldn't give them a grief and stay.
Signing out from the Patriot, please join the Arundel Patriot. Please donate if you can at patreon.com forward slash the Arundel Patriot. Um, and thank you.